communities. These are four or five things we identified and we addressed them. Okay. We said, okay, everything will be transparent, information will be given to the people, our teams will go to the slum areas, they, we don't want them to come. Because in government what happens, if you go to a government office in Pakistan, the people are not available. The, cons the people are absent on the uh, not coming day. So poor persons can't afford that. You see the daily wage earners, you see for them every day means money. And then they have to pay money for commuting. So if there is a government work, is a department, there is some work, then he will take the leave from his uh, job, he will go there, spend money on transport, and wait for the whole day and nothing there. So we identified that there were 24 steps previously, and we reduced them to eight, and made our teams mobile, okay, and informed the people. And lo and behold, within six months, the, the things started moving, and we started earning a lot of money, and our organization became self financed Previously, we were taking money from the donors. Okay, that was one thing. Similarly, in sanitation, low-cost sanitation, because large number of people live in uh, squatter settlements, they face major problem in sanitation and drainage. So we developed some low-cost models. We took to the people, we showed them that this can be done like this. And initially, there was, as I said, there was a psychological barrier. They said, "Government, it is the government's job." Then we argued that the government has not done so far. How, will, how long will you wait? Who made this house for you? How do you get the education for your children? And then they started thinking. They say, okay, if we have made the house, we will say this is low cost. And if you spend money on this, you will be saving money on health. You will be improving your neighborhood. And they, are, they bought this idea. So second, sanitation was another area. And another important thing which has recently happened is health. Health in the province of Sin was facing the same problems which we, are, we mentioned about education. There are four types of health facilities in the rural areas. One is the dispensary, that <coughs> is the basic health unit for some uh, big, uh, small, smaller area. Then a bigger area is a rural health center. And in all these places, the doctors were not coming. They, they were appointed, but they were sitting in Karachi. They got themselves posted. There were no lady doctors. The nurses would not go there. So what we did was, this is, this is very important, and this we can, we, we can apply to education. We said, okay, this is the government responsibility to provide basic care. And government is spending money, this is not the issue. So we created an intermediary organization within the government. Because the regular health department has vested interest in you see appointment of doctors, in purchase of medicine, in uh, you see cycling of the money for repair, which is allocated for money. They have become so powerful that it's difficult to take work out. So we said intermediary organization which will be independent and the money will be financed through that. They will make their appointment, they will spend money on infrastructure, and then within three years, 1,000 facilities, health facilities were improved with the government money. And what I am emphasizing is government money. Government departments are doing this thing, but there was a separate project done. And he was supervised by an intermediary organization, which was a rural development organization. So that model, that can be applied in education as well. Because in education, similar problems exist. Because what is happening that the education minister would appoint the teachers after taking bribes. Or he would appoint teachers or who are party workers. And the absence of teachers will be ignored. And all these organizations, there are a number of organizations in the education department, the board of curriculum, and the teacher training colleges, and so, so many other facilities, all are lying, you see, unused or underutilized. So this, there has to be a, see, an effort to mobilize things like that. And that, that can come basically in two ways. Either the communities become 
organized and they put pressure on the government, which they are not. Or some outside agency like World Bank and USAID, they say, okay, what is happening? We are giving money. It's not being. But they have no clear idea themselves. So within the government, something has to be found. So this is one, uh, one area where we see if intervention is made, which has, has been made in health and sanitation and housing. And I'm not, I'm not talking about the housing project which I run. That is my basic work providing housing to low-income people with government money, which I did in Hyderabad, which I did in Karachi, which I did in Lahore. That is a separate issue, but that was worldwide, recognized worldwide. Okay? People are ready to pay money if they get services in return. That's the basic argument. World Bank used to, uh, I think in some cases, World Bank, we, we, we came to know that their argument is, the people are too poor to pay for any service. Previously, they said previously. So there should be subsidies. So we say no. There is no need for subsidies. People are ready to pay if you see the me mechanism or methodology is such as they, return, they get something in return and the payment is affordable. In housing, we showed that affordable housing is there, people are ready to pay. And people are ready to organize also. So there has to be, you see, that there are two things which have to be done. Number one, the psychological barrier has to be demolished. That the state has failed, government has failed, government can't, can't do it, and this is not the responsibility of the government. The private sector is there, they can do it, and they are doing it, and the problem will be solved. So it has to be discarded, number one. Secondly, the low-income area schools are to be supported in a big way. They are not getting support from the government, okay? Because these schools are being run on self-help basis, self-financing basis, and they are owner, uh, you see the owner is there, so they maintain the quality also. But they need money for expansion, they need, need money for purchasing equipment, they purchase money for uh, taking their uh, uh, students to uh, other libraries and museums, etc., etc., which we are doing in Orangi. There are 600 schools which we are supporting because I am uh, chairperson of Orangi Pilot Project and we are doing it. We provide sometimes uh, interest free loan, sometimes we provide them grants, and they need more support. And there is, you see, a lot of research on this subject. I wrote, I, I found a book. Some, uh, I, I don't remember the name of the gentleman. He, he you see, visited many countries and he came to the same con conclusion which we are doing. Supporting low-income area schools with government money so that they become, uh, you see, uh, they, 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 their qualities improve. So these are the, you see, few points I wanted to cover. I think I have only taken... You still have five more minutes. Five more minutes. So, you see, uh, just to recap, the current state of education is dismal. And it continues to be dismal, and it will continue to be dismal unless we address the basic core issue. Okay, what is the state's responsibility and how, you see, it is doable. The basic thing is, it is doable. And it must be done. Okay? For example, in the United States, there is a big debate about health care. Why? The conservatives are saying, no, this is not the state's responsibility, okay? So Pakistan government, if they also buy this idea. But you see, unfortunate thing, they are spending money. If they were not spending money, I would say, okay, you give it to the private sector and you support the private sector or small, uh, you see, schools which are in low-income area. But the bureaucratic setup is huge, unwieldy, corrupt, and had developed a vested interest in everything, a status quo. The governments come and governments go, whether it is the center is government or the right is government or the left is government, the bureaucracy remains the same and you see the cycle of it. So something has to be done very quickly. The adult literacy is also, you see a major problem because of the poor education and the fresh enrollment is also there. And the problem lies especially in rural areas, in far-flung areas. 
because in the cities, in urban areas, they are NGOs, okay, whether we agree or disagree with their approach, but they are there. They provide some education, okay? But in rural areas, it is different. For example, Baluchistan is a huge uh, mountainous area. The roads don't exist. The drinking water is not there even for ordinary users. So the schools, how will they? Uh, NGOs. But it is fashionable in Pakistan to go and open the schools with aid, aid money. It's fashionable. So there are large number of DFID, UNICEF, uh, SIDA. They give money for different purposes.